Great to see you. Nice to be here. Thank you so much for coming and giving us of, uh, of your time tonight. Pleasure. Uh, you've been here before? You've seen this place before? Yeah? Yes. 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 A couple of times. Yes. Fantastic. And you th what do you think of it? Fantastic. Marvellous. Isn't it? There's a lovely bass note for you, David. You could, you could just take it off from the oh, man, really, really. <laughs> uh, Before we talk about the singing careers, which we obviously want to talk about, can we go back to the start of this amazing journey that the three of you are now on? You two are brothers. Yes. Yep. From a little town called Claudie. Claudie. In, in there. Take us back to those days, those early childhood days, and your parents and your upbringing and so on. Gosh. Well, where do you start? Revealing well, all about life. You further to go back than he has. I just, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ever so slightly, yes. It just really, well, I just say there's not much difference between us, Martin, but he reminds me there's three and, three and, and a half, half years. years. <laughs> <laughs> like, I suppose when you're further down the bus, uh, it's important to remember, remind your elder brother. No, we grew up uh, in the countryside in, in Claudie, um, maybe sadly more famous in recent history for the terrible bomb that took place there. But uh, we lived about a mile outside the village, went to the local school. Uh, our mother um, played the organ in the church, and she had numerous run runs in with the parish priest. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, uh, he, he didn't particularly like music. He didn't like a lot of music uh, in the church. And I think my mother had an opposite view on the matter. But they came to blows over a tanto mergo uh, <laughs> <laughs> on one occasion. And I, remember, I was there because I was a wee bit older than Martin, so I came down, I was part of my mother's choir, choir of herself and myself, uh, on, the, on, must have been the October devotions or something, but anyway, they came to blows over the Tanto Mergo, and my mother slammed down the, the organ, and, uh, the, um, the top of the organ, and she, they went round, anyway, she had a big uh, exchange of opinions with Father uh, in the sacristy afterwards. And, but they remained solid friends. They, they aired, they got it out of the way, and uh, they agreed to differ, shall we say, <laughs> over, over, over the songs and the hymns, etc. But that, so that's life in nearly every parish, I suppose, from time to time. But you're a twin. No, he's the twin. You're a twin. I'm the twin, yes. I have you, a twin sister. You have a twin sister? Yes, yes. Wow. And then we have two other twins in the family. Joan and Miura. Joan now deceased, sadly, but uh, Miura. So with two okay, sets so of there twins. Are two sets of twins. Two sets of twins and two singles. And you. Yep. So that was five of you all together? Six. Six. Oh, yeah, six, 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 six. <laughs> it's late in the evening. We're a bit like a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> <laughs> Two sets of twin, that's four, but you're one of the four. I'm one of the four, yes. And you're five? And he's a single. And then there's the elder, the elder brother. brother. You didn't Francis. tell me about the elder brother. He's, he's yes. the best kept secret. <laughs> <laughs> the elder brother, Francis. Yeah. So it was a musical family, Martin. Do, do you remember yes. it as such? Yeah, absolutely. Some of my earliest memories are certainly my mother singing and as children I think she recognised the, the fact that we had the ability to sing. So music was always in the house uh, very, very much indeed. Now Daddy could sing as well but Mummy was the one who was very uh, proactive in that whole world. So she began to teach us singing in the front room, the good room. The good room, which was like Tut Ankh Amun's tomb that was only <laughs> opened on certain occasions. <laughs> so we all made our way into the sitting room where the piano was kept, of course, and so we stood together. Now, Francis didn't, didn't do any singing at all. He probably thought himself more as managerial material, so he just <laughs> stayed out of it. And the five of us then sang. So the two wee ones at the front, Martina and myself, Eugene was behind me, and then Mura on Joe on either side. So it was a Claudie von Trapp family. The, it was the von Hagen family. <laughs> and uh, so we, she began to teach us music from the shows. So The Sound of Music was the big, big blockbuster film at the time. Uh, so she started teaching us music from the and Sound And where did you music. sing these songs? Where did you go to sing them? So she took us to, my mother was, our mother was a nurse by profession. So uh, she would have brought us to nursing homes, uh, to, host, to the hospital, uh, to sing for the patients from a very early age. I remember being brought uh, into the hospitals along with us all. Mm. Uh, she loved that, and she was asked by the matron who, who took her aside one, t one evening and said, Joan Daly, which was her maiden name, have you come here to nurse her to sing? <laughs> <laughs> to which my mother replied, a wee bit of both. <laughs> so maybe the music was something of a medicine for the patients. Mm. And she kept that going right throughout her life. Uh, you know, even when she was very ill uh, in the Royal Victoria Hospital, uh, when she was getting preparing for a, a, a triple bypass, she still had the concerts proper wow. ahead, and Eugene and myself had to sing, and the patients were getting their pillows ready for the concert. <laughs> <laughs> so music was always a big part of our lives. Did your mum and dad live to see the success you, you had? 
Uh, no, sadly, our mother died uh, in 2004. And, but our father lived on until 97 yes. when he died. And he, he was part of the, the journey and part of the, he saw some it. of the, yeah. the Fly on the Wall documentary film that was taken uh -huh. at the time. So, uh, oh yeah, he entered into the spirit of it <laughs> greatly and enjoyed, enjoyed the, the, uh, the excitement of it all and gave us great advice and uh, as you know, a man of his, of his many years. And uh, no, he was, he was, he was quietly Lovely. delighted. And, uh, but we were, in a sense, I think our dear mother, from her vantage point uh, uh, from the heavens. Saw it all. Uh, saw it all. Saw it Maybe all. designed it all, who knows? Well, yeah, well I, yeah I, you know, yes. but in a sense, I think part of our story is uh, that it's providential in, yes. the, in, the, in, the, in the precise sense of the word. Yeah. David, what about you? Ballymena man. Ballymena man, that's right. Um, um, Glenn's roots as well. Glenn's Vandam roots up in Glen Arif and, and Glen Ravel and, you know, cushioned all that whole part of the world as well. And what's your family? What was your family involved in? So, uh, my father was a bookie, and, uh, <laughs> and my mother was a primary school teacher. Uh, and there was, again, there were six of us in our family, two boys and four girls, for exactly the same as the, no, not the same as the boys, you had three and three. We had, well, where did uh, you fit in on that family? I'd come third, so if a brother and a sister were older than so me. You were the middle one, three, really? I'm the middle one, mm. that's right. You were the odd one. That's right, it's, um, <laughs> nothing has changed, uh, I'm still, <laughs> still a little bit odd. But anyway, yeah, so we, I, we didn't have the kind of the same musical upbringing that, that the guys had here. Uh, but we would have sing songs, sing family sing songs. My parents would have belonged to that era where, um, or certainly their parents before them, where entertainment was in, in, the, in, the, in the kitchen or in the room at house where all the neighbours came in and you rolled back the carpet <laughs> and people, you know, did a bit of singing, you said a poem or you sang a song, or you did a bit of dancing, you know, just in the kitchen but round people's homes. That's the era that they would have grown up in. So, you know, everybody was supposed to have a party piece and if there's a general sing song, you know, you kind of joined in uh, with it. And What was your party piece back then, can you remember? Oh, my goodness, uh, the Gypsy Rover. Uh, I think, and uh, that would. How, that how was does it go, Jeff? The gypsy <laughs> rover came over the hill, down by the valley so shady. So yeah, so we had that done. Oh, that was short. Was we did short. a bit of. Short. <laughs> you were just, you're just warming up. Oh, just warming up. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, we did that, and we sang in the car, and you know, I think uh, I was singing in school as well. I was interested in in, in that, in primary school. And I think my mum and dad at some stage said, you know, he's not half bad, you know. And so then they encouraged my, my interest in singing okay. after that. So the three of you went off to Garantar. Tower? Yes. yes. Well, you were first there, Eugene, and then a couple of years later you, you joined. Yeah. Yes. Had you any idea then when you were going that the priesthood would be the final outcome of that? Or were you just thinking this is grammar school, I'll pick a career a bit later in life? Uh, well, um we have to admit, you know, when we were children, not only did we sing together in a, in a choir formation like the Von Trapp family, but we also imitated the priest saying mass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, which was, a, which was off its time, I think. I mean, that, that, that was done, I think, in various houses. But uh, I suppose we, it was a bit of, you know, there were six of us in the house and we made our own fun. And uh, we were, lived out in the countryside. We, we visited the neighbours and we played with their children and we all assembled down in ours. We had a fairly big uh, garden, big, well, big front garden. for children. Uh, uh, this this was a vast, it probably wasn't yes, as yes, big as yes, we yes, saw. Yes, yeah. But, um, oh yeah, we used to kind of uh, imitate in a sense what, was, what we saw it happening on a Sunday. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, it was, uh, and uh, I think we did it fairly well we too. Yeah, we, 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 kept all, we kept all the rubrics. We, we kept all the rubrics. Well, what did you do, like, what did you do? Oh, we had processions and the whole used to get the brush. Yeah, we had the brush. <laughs> Turn upside down like a cross and we had made our way forward and then yeah. it was a canopy. Oh, we did, we did it in style. We followed. It was natural you two oh, yeah. would be priests then. So, uh, like, <laughs> So maybe maybe there was a bit of that, but going to the Karen Tower, that wasn't that wasn't for that wasn't the aim. That wasn't, that wasn't the aim. No, that wasn't the aim. You see, um, I had failed the eleven plus, and I, I was due to go to another school, but fortuitously met a priest from Garan Tower, who heard me sing, and the priest said, "What school are you going to?" And I told him, and he said, "Have you ever heard of Garan Tower?" No one ever heard of Garan Tower. Uh, and then he said, um, when, when are your mummy and daddy coming down to collect you to take you home? I said, tomorrow. So he appeared this, on the tomorrow, had a word with my mother and father, and uh, said, you know, um, the school, Garantara, at that time, uh, was, had a great musical tradition and great musical teach, teaching going on, as well as the academic side of things. 
I think the school I was going to, the, the principal thought, no, no, you have to concentrate on the academic and the music is external. Yeah, yeah. So you have to get your review, as it was called then, I think. That's right. And that's your priority. And uh, so he emphasized that the music was to be kind of secondary. secondary. Whereas this other priest said, oh, well, I think we can do, we can do both. And that's how, I, that's how we ended up going to Garantar. Right, it was more, should, by more by accident than design. More by accident. David, similar reasons? Did music play a part of you going to Garantar? No, not at all. Were you boarding? Uh, I was boarding, yes. Even though we were, you know, Ballymena and, and Garantar, not that yeah. uh, d much distant uh, from one another. But um, my brother had gone the year before me. Uh, and I think my parents, they, they, they had a number of school choices that, that were available to them. Uh, one of them was St. Louis in Ballymena, which had just recently gone co-ed and they hadn't really developed uh, sports for, for boys. Um, my brother was very much into his sports, and uh, so I think that was the natural choice for them to send them down to Garantar yeah. for that reason. And then I kind of just followed on his coattails after that. Um, I don't think that there was ever, uh, any of us sort of went into school, you know, thinking that you were going to become a priest. Uh, that certainly was not, not something that was ever mentioned or spoken about or talked about. Um, but having said that, the school was staffed by clergy yeah. uh, and they were undoubtedly a big influence on us. Did uh, you have any clergy, any religious people in your families, any priests, any nuns? Yeah, there are a lot of priests and, and our family cousins and uncles and grand uncles and great uncles and there's nuns in the family as well. So it uh, wasn't totally alien to you, the thought of becoming... Well, the only one that I was aware of was my mum's sister was a nun. The rest of them I wasn't conscious of. They were cousins of my mother or cousins of my father, so people that I wouldn't really have known. Yeah. Uh, so I couldn't say that any of them had an influence on me. It, uh, the influence that would have been on me, I think, was simply the fact that the, you know, the faith was a big part of the school's life. You were required to go to Mass every morning, for example, and there was evening prayer, night prayer, before you went off to your various dormitories. So that sort of rhythm of prayer, morning and night prayer, and of course then singing in the school choir for the various college liturgies, all of that kind of had a big influence. And then as well as that, there was um, a big uh, upsurge of charismatic renewal in the, in the 1980s was a big, big, big thing. And it took our school by storm. Uh, we had one uh, very inspiring priest still uh, operating in the diocese today who took upon himself to organize prayer meetings for the students, thinking perhaps that maybe one or two might come. But after a period of months and maybe a couple of years or so, it had grown to a, a stage where practically all the students were choosing to come wow. to this prayer meeting it was a you know there's lots of music and singing and it was a very free expression of uh, of our faith but certainly something that appealed very much to young people who maybe didn't appreciate the the, the, the rigidity shall we say if I may use that word of the, the strict yeah, liturgy yeah. this is much freer and you, fr there's more freedom to express yourself and so on so it's a way a lot of young a lot of young men got vocations out of that uh, so that by the time I went to the seminary in Belfast uh, in, it was called the wing attached to St Malachy's College. There were 26 rooms uh, and, I, and they were taking students from uh, Armagh and Dromore and Derry uh, and Down and Connor. And Down and Connor students uh, were, I'd say it was three quarters full of Down and Connor students and most of those were out of Garantar. But every room was filled? Every mm -hmm. room was filled. Change every days, filled. change so days, change, yeah. You, when you two decide, when did you decide the priesthood could be for me? When, when did you decide, Martin? Well, for me, I, I think that the, the, the seedlings of that sort of vocation were already planted in my mind at an early age, probably about seven or eight, maybe. I was very conscious of this sense of call, but uh, nurtured it, I suppose, uh, simply by my taking part in, in that faith dimension of our parents and just the, the normal rhythm. It always struck me. It was a different world, of course. The, the technological boom hadn't happened at all in the sense that you, you, maybe it was a much more reflective uh, period of time. 
But then when I went to Garantar, I was always conscious that Eugene was blazing a trail uh, as Did he made his way to, the, to Garantar. And uh, Eugene would have been an influence in my becoming did, a priest as well. Did the two of you confide in each other that this is the way you were thinking? Mm, well, I think, well, sometimes some, it would happen. Not, not and, very uh, consciously, not uh, more by just, you know, again, yeah. conversation. And I suppose we, we can read each other's thoughts in a sense, yeah. in, a, in a way, and how, how, you, how you feel about things yeah, yeah. without articulating it too much. Yeah, and I think, I, th I think the school was also very good. It, it did nurture the vocations insofar as you could go on a retreat and maybe to discern what you wanted to do. Um, but but you know, the clergy, the priests were excellent in terms of their their influence on us, and and many of the staff were wonderful people themselves. Uh, for me, I was very impressed by them, by their lovely nature, uh, their acceptance of who we were, and encouraged us and shaped us for life. So uh, we owe them a big debt of gratitude. So the three of you sang all your way through Garantar. Yeah. You did. How did you How did you realise you could sing? Was this just came, come through the choir? Gertie. Gertie. Oh, Gertie did it. Gertie. Who the hell's Gertie? S S Gertie. Gertie. <laughs> Sister Gertie was foot. about four foot and five inches tall, <laughs> and and uh, she was a Louis sister, and she was in charge of music, uh, and she put she yeah she put everything together when it came to uh, music along with uh, Father Patsy McCavena who was another great musician and an Irish, a Gael Gore and a mathematician. He was so talented, he had people like that. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but he was, he was he, he, Gertie in particular, she mothered us because we were not boarders oh, of, of school. And so, so when I said, she mothered all the boys, just uh -huh. not us, she mothered everybody. But were you performing as a threesome at that time? No, we weren't, weren't at that stage. Uh, um, I was ahead of the boys for about two okay. years. But yeah. Gilbert and Sullivan was yeah. a big tradition in the, in the college. So when Martin and David came, that's when we graced the stage yes. for the first time in 1974 in the Pirates, the Pirates of Penzance. Did you was, have a role? We did. I was Major General Stanley. Oh. <laughs> My voice had broken. <laughs> so I, I, went, I had gone from up there down to somewhere in, somewhere in, in between. Yes. It was un, unsure. So and, I got. And we were Major Stanley's daughters. <laughs> <laughs> it was a big family affair. <laughs> So you left, you left Garantar, you then, the priesthood, that's what was on. Where did you go to after Garantar? Queens. 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 Yeah. Mm. Up to Queens and then on to Rome. And, and what did, did you study at Rome? Uh, theology, theology, theology degree there and then other specialisms. And what did you, spe you specialise in? Well, and then eventually in canon law. Canon law, and you were? Sacramental theology. And moral theology. Yes, could we have a debate about all three Certainly. of them? Why not? Yes, <laughs> you're starting for ten. You're starting for ten. But in, at Queen's, we had a fantastic opportunity in terms of the music because it was there that we encountered Mr. Frank Capper, who was our teacher. teacher. Yes. And he was an amazing man. Eugene, he was already a student with him. Mm. And uh, I must say, a man who shaped us not only in terms of, of the, the vocal side, uh, but he had such a wonderful knowledge of music and there was a slide robe not far from the kitchen and he would pull back the slide robe jam-packed with music in perfect order and he would pick one, two, three, four. I want you to learn those now for the end of the month for the performance club. <laughs> the blood drained from my <laughs> system as we had to learn German, French wow. and you had to get up there and sing and get experience but he was an amazing man. He would challenge you about vocation and about priesthood. Tell me about your God, <laughs> he would say. Really? Tell me about your God. Uh, and that he would say something to shock us. I've never met somebody who needs so much affirmation uh, <laughs> as your God. <laughs> you know, and every, su every, every Sunday. And, and that can you, you suddenly got to yourself. You say, oh, gosh, well, when you get over thing. the shock of, of, of thinking that that's blasphemy coming from somebody, <laughs> you say to yourself, gosh, let me, think that, let me think that one through. I'll come back to you. I'll come, I'll come back to you. I'll leave that one with me. But no, he kind of challenged us, I think, in a nice, in a nice yeah, way, yeah, but sometimes yeah. he did it in a very dramatic way. Well, look, can we hear what he was teaching at the time? Could we hear you sing a little bit or something? Oh, we sing, we sing something. Yeah. Hmm. Well, maybe we'll sing. We were asked that very same question. It says, do you boys sing anything together? when we did the audition okay, for do this. You, do you boys sing anything together? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and we said, all right, we do. So maybe we'll, we'll, we'll sing. We'll sing the, this is a little Panis Angelicus oh, that lovely, we sang. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Uh, and we hadn't sung it for years until we went for this famous audition, um, but we'll tell you more we'll about it yes, later. Okay. And then uh, David's in charge of the notes. Go ahead, David. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Nasıl doğru yaptı? Bak. Beautiful. Guys, I know there are many twists and turns in, in life, but you know, having signed up for the religious life and then back here, settled into your your respective parishes, surely you never could have foreseen what was in store for the three of you. No, absolutely not. This came something completely out of the blue. Uh, Jerry, it was it was never something that we had aspired to or even imagined would be possible. I think there was a stage when uh, we had been singing together at ver on various occasions and thought, wouldn't it be lovely to record a CD some, at some stage, uh, just to have, you know, to record our voices, you know, for our own enjoyment, yes. for our family, friends, whatever. Yes. Uh, and then all of a sudden this, this uh, opportunity arose, Sony, um, the record label, were looking, they had a project in mind, they were looking for one priest uh, to, to, to sing on the album and they were doing auditions around around Ireland to find a priest who could sing it. Uh, they started off, I think, in, in Derry City, been a, a city that's very, has a strong musical uh, tradition. And uh, of course, the guys being from Derry, uh, the voice, uh, their names came up, they were suggested. Martin was contacted in the first instance to see if he would be interested in auditioning for this. And Martin then being the generous soul that he is, said, can, can, my, brother, can my big brother can come too? <laughs> can he have a go? And we have a friend, could he try as well? So all well, three okay. of us, <laughs> we all ended up, you know, thinking that, well, if, if we're lucky, one of us will get the, the, the job. Uh, and then they, they learned a little bit about our history, the fact that two were brothers, the three of us have been singing together all these years. And they asked that question, is there something that you can sing together? <laughs> so the three of us did that little piece, Panic at Panis Angelicus. In the meantime, this was being live streamed back to the, the, the powers that be uh, in, in so, Sony yeah. BMG in London. And I think at that stage, we were a good 15, 16 years younger, uh, perhaps somewhat fresher around the gills. <laughs> there, and, uh, and they liked the look of us, they liked the sound of us, and they... I think they conferred and thought, look, let's do something completely different. Let's get these three guys and, and do an album with them. Uh, it was as simple as that. Yes. That was the start yes. of it anyway. Yes. Yes. And you brought out that album was The Priests. The Priests was the, the priest. first. Yeah. That album set a record in the Guinness Book of Records, the fastest selling classical debut of all time, surpassing the likes of Pavarotti, Catherine Jenkins, mm -hmm. over three million albums sold. The album turned seven times platinum in Ireland, platinum in the UK, Sweden, Norway, as well as going gold in New Zealand, Canada and Spain. Even Beyonce would be delighted with figures <laughs> like that, wouldn't <laughs> it? Well, sure, when you say it, it's, a, such a, yeah, it's, a, it's a bit of a dream, really. You know, when you think yeah, about it. Incredible. And originally, they, they, they Sony had said to us, Epic Label, that we we're going to launch it in the UK. We thought, this is absolutely UK and Ireland. Wow, wow. how wonderful. We were so pleased at this. And then they changed their minds and said, no, we've decided to launch it worldwide. Well, we were completely taken by storm, and so the, the wheels were set in motion. We had to do a lot of PR, and um, this brought us to a different number of countries, um, given our pastoral duties as well, which they were also very mm. careful to, to safeguard. We said they we, were, so yes, they were. We, we, we had to make it very clear we couldn't be available 24-7. So the contract actually built into it the fact that we were priests in the diocese with our respective responsibilities and they honoured that, which was quite unusual uh, at that time. Yeah. Uh, and so the album went worldwide, uh, thanks be to God. How well, difficult was it to commit yourselves to, to that commercial venture? I mean, you had to take a lot of things into account, did you say? Did you need permission from the bishop or perhaps even higher to do this type of thing? Well, uh, the bishop, thankfully, at the time, obviously knew we, we sang, and I, uh, I had a conversation with the bishop, as you, as you normally do, uh, and I, be, I, being the senior of the group, uh, was nominated as the... Go you, go you, go you, go you. Go you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the bishop, he was, he, was, he was excellent, I have to say. Um, this came as, uh, unexpectedly to him as well. He reminded, he reminded me, now Eugene, you are, this, you are the older of the group and I'm, you have to look after them. And remember, as I, is that, I've, right, been, I've, been true to, I've been true to that ever since. At least that's what you told us. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, whatever about your talents as singers, etc., you are a priest first. 
So that kind of, that ringing in your ears, we went out. Uh, and um, we didn't really know, we, we didn't receive any training. We weren't brought away for a week to some secluded venue to be taught how to deal with media. Uh, they didn't tell us everything, it has to be said, because they, were, uh, they later uh, told us that they were afraid of frightening us a little bit. But given our <clears throat> age at the time, I would have been 48, and the guys were 40, 44, 45. So we, we were that wee bit older. We weren't in the first flush of youth, shall we say. We had a bit of experience uh, under our belt, and I think they read that saying, better to let them go as they are without trying to create something artificial. At least that's the way I, that's the way I think of yeah. it now. Yeah, but they were sending you into a world that you knew nothing about. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yes, yes. Now there must have been some parameters. I mean, you were invited on to chat shows all over the world. Yes. Were they not worried that you could have been compromised somewhere along the line by some clever television presenter or some clever television producer? There may have been that fear, um, but I think um, I pr we probably acquitted ourselves. Pretty well, I think, in the f uh, that maybe that fear maybe dissipated somewhat. Mm -hmm. But um, initially, we were kind of going out thinking, we're not here to speak for the church. We're only here to sing. <laughs> you know, we're not here to sort of be representatives of the church and to sort of present the church's views on various controversial issues. And of course, there were pen plenty controversial issues. Uh, but we weren't primarily sent out to engage with the media about those things. We yeah. were there um, because, simply because we sang and uh, all we wanted to do was stand up and sing uh, and don't be asking us any kind of uh, very um, difficult questions. But of course, if you've got three priests, you're going to, you're yeah. going to yeah. raise the burning questions of the day. And so that did happen. Yeah. Uh, and um, we tried to just, I guess, use our own wisdom to respond to it. Uh, in the same way that lots of people were all struggling about a lot of these things, where there was a, you know, we're all trying to make sense of it and trying to wake our, make our, our way through things. And so there was a whole evolution of thinking and everything going on, even in ourselves yes. and within the church about things. And we just tried to be honest and open and accepting of the realities. And, and did you like those realities? Because you so up close and personal, the workings of the music industry, the workings of show business. Had you any qualms about anything that you saw? I, th I think that maybe that exposure introduced us to an entirely new landscape, a new world mm. in which we met a lot of very talented individuals and a lot of people who were endeavouring to earn a, a, good, a wage for their families. So we, we um, so in a sense, we, we met people who were struggling, people who were endeavouring just to, to do their very best in the industry, but brought a lot of talent and a lot of expertise. I don't think there was any, I don't think we're, we were afraid by any means. In fact, it was the music industry getting used to us more mm. than us getting used to the music industry because they maybe had a perception of what a priest was, maybe rather two-dimensional, but, but we were much more than that. And we actually laughed. Uh, which also helped and uh, yeah like I mean so I, I, the Jonathan Ross show for example yes oh, I would have run a mile from that but no yeah. the three of you <laughs> went straight it into it and it was a fantastic yeah. experience we ended up throwing snowballs snowballs at the audience the show. No, I have to say be honest Jerry we were terrified where, yeah. where? we were terrified who was on that night with you um, Hugh Grant, oh, the Killers, the Killers. Uh, the Killers were on, the Killers, yeah. Oh, I, the Killers were on. And Hugh Grant was on one evening. Hugh Grant, he was on He was more evening. nervous than we were. Yes. Hugh Grant? Yeah, yes. where he, he was. He turned to us and said, are, are you really priests? Joanna Lumley was on. Joanna Lumley was on. We were twice yeah. in Jonathan Ross. Yes, yes. we were twice. We were twice in Jonathan Ross. But you had the biggest turnover in the first audience. Is that right? Is there anything you saw that you didn't like? Anything about the, the business that you were in? Um, well, as Martin said, it was a kind of a whole new environment to us, and so we were learning all the time. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, they, were, they, they didn't know how to react to us because they thought they had to be terribly good and well-behaved when we were kind of around, and uh, they, they weren't it themselves. But uh, actually, they soon, they soon warmed to the fact that we were th three, hopefully, perceived to be straight-talking, ordinary guys yeah. who happened to be priests and wear collars, okay, and had a job to do and had a calling. And they were, they were hugely respectful they were. of it, I have to they say. Were, yeah. Hugely respectful. 
uh, which um, maybe is hard to believe, but that, that's, that was our experience. I think, uh, I don't think we experienced yeah. anything nasty. People were or, saying to us, you know, in the beginning uh, about, you know, the music industry uh, and being somewhat corrupt or taken, taking advantage, let's say, yeah. of uh, younger, um, more inexperienced performers yes. and tying them into contracts, you know, that left them at a disadvantage where the, the label had all the, the power and the, and, the, and the performer really just became a, the, the performing poodle, really, you know, where everybody else was pulling the strings. Uh, and no doubt there's a, a, a great truth to that. And you hear some horror stories from other artists um, just about how they have felt totally abused and used yes. and disadvantaged by uh, their record labels and they've done everything they can to try and get out of that uh, relationship. Mm. But we didn't experience that. Um, we were aware of it and it was, we were, we were aware of it simply because people were alerting us, alerting us to it. And, uh, but we didn't personally experience anything of that nature. You've travelled all over the world. You've, you've toured UK and Ireland, you've toured Europe, you've toured America. Pick out some of the highlights for me that, that you will take to your grave. Gosh. Well, the Royal Albert Hall in London would yeah. have been a big one That's because we, we, we had the, uh, the good fortune to uh, attend and on, twice to the Classic Brit Awards and on one occasion sing alongside people like Il Devo and um, Placido de Domingo was in the same dressing room and as was um, Jonas Kaufmann, Kaufmann and Kiri Takanoa and all these big names. You must have been pinching and, yourself and, though. Exactly. Absolutely. Kiri Takanoa was next door to us. My goodness. And we kind of peered over through the... But uh, so all of a sudden to be in that kind of, of company was a bit overwhelming but at the same time ter exciting. So um, I have to say also one of the greatest ones was um, we, we did the PBS uh, recorded concert in Arma in St. Patrick's yeah, Cathedral in Arma. And uh, that was a real uh, gem of a venue for starters. And they threw everything at it in terms of lights, uh, you know, the sound. Real the, spectacular. The, a real spectacular, you know, uh, event. And uh, at, the, at the time that we were so uh, new to the whole thing, we didn't really appreciate it. But I think of, with the benefit of hindsight and experience, looking back on that, that was a that was a standout moment, I think, for us. Hyde Park in London. I have a few kind of standout moments of intense excitement, uh, Jerry. And one was whenever we were actually going to, uh, uh, after we'd released the album, we would we'd flown into I think it was Heathrow, and we were in a, a car, a taxi, or not a taxi. It was a car that had been laid on by the company. So it's a big... It's called a limo, David. It's called a limo. <laughs> <laughs> one of those. One of those. And we were just driving in the road in towards London and there was one of these massive big billboard mm. uh, things by the side of the road. And it was us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was so exciting. That was yeah. just unbelievable. And look what it is now. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. Fantastic. Yeah, right. Jerry Kelly. The <laughs> <Jerry Kelly. laughs> Another one was Hyde Park, uh, where Pope Francis, no, sorry, Pope Benedict yes. was coming on a visit to, to the UK. And we were kind of asked to come along to Hyde Park to be a kind of a, a warm up, a warm up for the crowds that were there. Um, but before that, one of the exciting moments was in the Odyssey Arena, where we, we were just new, if you like. We were just new. We were just kind of being put out there. And we had something like 6,500 people came to the Odyssey Arena. And th just the thought of us, here we are standing here in the Odyssey Arena, and all these people have come to hear us. Uh, I mean, that was just kind of mind-boggling yeah, right. for, for us. Hyde Park was something like 80,000 mm -hmm. people oh. live. And, um, and millions on the TV screens. The same thing uh, for the, I think it was the World Meeting of Families down in, in Croke in Dublin, Park yeah. in Dublin. This time it was Pope Francis coming. Uh, and we had been asked, well, along with lots of other uh, Irish artists to, to contribute towards a, a concert, again, a warm-up concert before Pope Francis would arrive into the arena. Um, but that was wonderful, sharing the stage uh, with some big, 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 big names and well-established names uh, in uh, in popular music, as Andrea Bocelli was there that night, 
and lots of others, well-known names. And the other occasion, again in Hyde Park, it was for the Eucharistic Congress. Again, 80,000 people, and you, they have set up a podium right in the centre of Croke Park for us to stand on. And we're surrounded by all these thousands upon thousands of people. So it's just the overwhelming nature of the, 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 the magnitude of it all. Uh, and the excitement of it and the buzz. Those are just some things that, I can only imagine. you know, uh, you just never forget. Martin, what have you? Well, one occasion that, that certainly stands out for me was in 2013. The three of us were invited to go to a large vocations gathering in the Vatican. Oh, yeah. And we were uh, in, in the Paul VI Hall, which of course holds about 6,000 people. And we were invited by our professor who taught us in Rome, uh, Fisichella. Archbishop Fisichella as he is now. He was father of Fisichella when we were students. So he invited us to come back and uh, through the Ministry of the Music to sing in that occasion, uh, sing at that occasion. And it was a wonderful occasion. We were gathering up a real melting pot of nations from right across the world. And they all looked so young in comparison to ourselves. We were slightly more mature at that stage. But it was a fantastic opportunity and lovely to meet Pope Francis himself afterwards. Would the Pope know you? Would the Pope know who you three, the three of you are? So I don't know. <laughs> don't really I don't know whether he would know us. But I tell you what, John Paul, Pope John Paul would have known us. Because when we were students in the Irish College and we were frequently over in the Vatican singing at uh, various yeah, liturgical events, events yeah. so Christmas, Easter, and through the year, and you always got to meet the Pope in the lineup afterwards. He'd right. come along and he would greet you and he'd give you rosary beads and so on. And uh, I can remember the very last time I met him. It was my f final year in Rome. Excuse me, and uh, and I was singing at something. I think it was some of the Easter ceremony. We met him afterwards and he said, Irish College, yeah. Irish oh, College. Oh, very good, that was, very that's good. Right, really well. very but we good. did have a very interesting, interesting experience on that occasion when we were invited over to the Vatican to sing in 2013. So we were just resting and, and, and getting ready for the, uh, the occasion later on that afternoon. So we had a rehearsal in, in the morning. It was quite, quite warm. So David decided then to go up to his room and I'll let him take you from there. <laughs> well, the, the interesting thing, we were staying in the, in, in, the, in the building where Pope Francis lives. And there are two parallel blocks that share a roof and a common atrium. And I was on the third floor in this particular block. <coughs> Pope Francis lives on the third floor in this block. <laughs> I inadvertently got into the wrong lift. Uh, <laughs> And the, the, the stopped at the third floor, the doors open, and there's Pope Francis standing directly in front of me. He knows who he Scotty. is. Yes, he knows <laughs> him. <laughs> and a Swiss, and a Swiss, and a Swiss guard. guard who stepped forward with his halberd or whatever you call it. Uh, and, and he says, the, the Swiss guard says to me, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? And I, said, I live here. <laughs> I'm on the third floor. <laughs> He's in my room. My, room. my room's down the corridor. My room's in. <laughs> but I came down, but I mean, it was like Moses oh, coming down the mountain, you know, my face. Was... <laughs> what a great story, what a great story. Yes. Um, do you consider that you're, you're leading a double life? Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> um, good question, in a sense. I think we're kind of living a... We've always integrated music into our priesthood and vice versa. Yes. I mean, I remember once going to, when I first went to... Um, Ballet Claire, where I was appointed as an as administrator in 2003. Um, I introduced myself as saying uh, who I was, where I've come from, and uh, I said, now I'm interested in music. In fact, this is my ecclesiastic alarm, you may say, and this is my music alarm. And I can't really operate terribly well with, if I have one arm tied behind my back. Okay. It was a way to explain that uh, the package they were getting, so to speak, uh, in the parish involved uh, you know, obviously the ch uh, ch uh, my church identity, but also I, I had a musical uh, kind of gift, and that that that's, was shared with priesthood and, and vice versa. So it was a, I would see it as a kind of a, a hopefully an integrated kind. I can of understand thing. that, but part of the music is you've become superstars around the world. You are known in the showbiz world. Hmm. You're not just somebody who's singing yeah. religious songs for the for the church. It's bigger than that. Mm -hmm. It almost, you have to divorce yourself 
in many ways and lead this parallel life. Maybe it's not a second. I think parallel mm. is, is, a, is a fair enough word to use. Uh, it's not entirely separate because even when we're out uh, singing and performing, very often it's for charities yes. and for church charities and churches of, of every stripe and colour and uh, denomination. Um, we, we kind of we were very clear ourselves from the word go that uh, we wanted our music to be for everyone, uh, people of faith and no faith, and everybody else in between. And, uh, and we've always seen that what we did on the stage, be it in a concert hall or in a church, that it was all... I mean, we, we always wore our, our, our clerical garb. Yeah. We, we always presented ourselves as priests, and the music that we sing, an awful lot of it, mm. is a, a sacred in nature. So it's a kind of a, it's a, kind of a, a reaching out to, be, to connect with people through the beautiful and uh, easily accessible medium of music rather than the, you know, preaching and that. that. There's a place for that. But there's also, it's a different language which speaks to people uh, at, a, at a profound level too. Uh, and so you're never entirely divorced or separated from your vocation, your priesthood, your mission yeah. uh, to minister and evangelize yeah. in the softest, gentlest yeah. possible yeah. way. Just when you, you mentioned that you always wore the garb, did record companies never suggest that maybe we go a wee bit more modern, we take the yeah, white collar off, more glamour, a few, <laughs> few Schwarzkopf jewels <laughs> hanging down? No, the, the only thing we ever happened that was a bit funny was the, the night we were on the, the Jonathan Ross show oh, yes. and the Killers. They showed a they showed a picture of the Killers dressed as the priests and us dressed as the Killers. <laughs> <laughs> and a, little, yeah. a little montage and, and yeah. kind of you know flashed up. All of a sudden, you saw the lead singer there dressed uh, like one of us, and we had I don't know eagle eagle, eagle feathers or something. Right. He hit a, he hit a, he how, how, how did you look? Did you look well? Pretty pretty Very good. Well. Uh, <laughs> good. You know, we good. Have, yeah. <laughs> There's another wee story in that that you know, when Eugene was uh, a priest in St Agnes, as one of the parishioners said. I wonder who's on this morning. Oh, it's Frank Sinatra. There was a sense of blending. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. All that music and yeah. Yeah. I don't know anybody in the business uh, that's had the success that you three have had who hasn't got an ego the size of this building. <laughs> yeah. Ego doesn't, it's not a good look for priests, is it? No. no. Okay, is there an ego there somewhere? Yes, there is. We all have an ego. I think we all have an ego. Well said, Dave. And Thank we... you for saying that. <laughs> I was expecting you to go, no, 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 no. No, no, the, 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 we have an ego for sure. Uh, and I think, you know, there is the potential. It's, it's as well that we were kind of a bit older and a bit longer in the tooth when this opportunity came along, because I think had we been younger, mm. uh, because the, the record labels, they fill your head with all sorts of things and they boost you up and, you know, they... You know, they do everything to satisfy you and please you. And, you know, that's why some of these uh, superstars have, you know, uh, these require list of requirements. Oh, these writers. The, writers uh, yeah. Before they will agree to sing or perform, and uh, they make these outrageous demands. I think ours was some sparkling water or some fruit or something. <laughs> but there is the potential for that very much there so is. to appeal to your, that, that ego part of yourself. And it will be granted to you as long as you're at the top. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, as long as you have used to them. As, correct. And you have to, you have to, you have to fight against that. You have to realise that dynamic. You have to recognise it in yourself, and you have to say, right, that's not good. Uh, and I remember Eugene say, using an expression I, that really spoke to me at the time. He said, "Look, you're priests, and just remember not to." I think the expression was, "Jump out of the bowl you were baiting." Good advice. Remember, oh, good remember advice. where you come from good and, and don't, don't lose the run of yourself. Yeah. Eugene's yeah. the venerable one. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think that has helped. Uh, yeah. like, you know, yeah. and it's, it's the colour that gets that that keeps you grounded. Yeah. I think yeah. so. Well, I think even parish, our parishes keep us grounded. Well, I was wondering, you know, do, do the, have you had any uh, grief from, from the parish, no, from no, your parishes? No, there's no toilet roll. <laughs> <laughs> You're back from your tour. Where's the back? Get um, things fixed. The toilet. But nobody has ever said... Look, the no, parishioners you know. in all our parishes have been the backbone so to the success of this. Yeah. They're the unsung heroes, really, in all of this, because mm -hmm. without their permission and their backing, we would not be, whatever about the bishop's backing, and etc., we would not have been able to do this. Yes. So uh, 
<laughs> many is a many is a parishioner. You say, go ahead, Father God, you're on your way. Now we'll not lose the faith while you're away, but we'll be expecting you to come back. <laughs> so, uh, but they joined us on the on the tour in a sense, yeah. in a virtual way, you know, because um, they were with us all all the way. Yeah. So really, without them, it would not have been possible. What about another wee song for us? <clears throat> oh no. <laughs> About, um, Shall we do a little verse of O'Danny Boy or oh, something? Oh, nice. well, That would be lovely. Something that'd from lovely. Something yes. that'd be City. And you know, this is one I'm sure that you all know very well too, so please yes. do. do join please I think free. we better stand up for this one yes. out of respect for, 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 the, for, the, for, for the man, for the man himself. Yes, for the Danny Boy. Well, it's better for the old breathing and diaphragm. Stuff, yeah. diaphragm and all that sort I of stuff. I know all about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know what people are like around here? These guys must be making a fortune. <laughs> Have you guys made a fortune and where does the money go? I know it doesn't go into your pockets. Well, selling three million records around that, that brings in a fair bit of revenue, shall yeah. we say. I remember the very first day it was announced that we had cut this deal with Sony. We were interviewed by a, a newspaper. Excuse me, excuse me. That you cut the steel with cut, Sony. Cut, cut the deal with oh, Sony. Oh. Is, that, is, that, is that what they say? Yes. Very good. <laughs> the, that's the link. That's, that's the, the, that's the, language, that's the, the language. We picked, we, picked, we picked up a few bits and a few phrases to, you know. So, uh, and that was one of the very first questions. We hadn't sold a record. We hadn't even made the record or the album at that stage. But it, obviously, we realised it was a, it was it was going to be an issue. Yes. In a sense. Uh, so we decided uh, very quickly uh, early on, we took advice, needless to say, on this because, because we weren't, you know, we, we have our own income as priests, etc. But uh, when it became obvious that these, this album was selling better than, <laughs> better than we had ever expected, because we thought this was going to be always a very local project, um, we, took, we took the appropriate advice. <clears throat> and <clears throat> obviously, 
uh, Sony or, or Epic, they, they make a huge investment in, in making an album mm. and in all mm. the PR that goes along with it. They want their money back. You have to pay that they back. They get their money back. That's mm. the first thing on the list. You know, if it takes one million, two million, whatever it is, to, and this is going to be a global project, obviously the stakes rise and the costs commensurately rise with it. So uh, a, f a huge amount of, this, of the sales of, the, of the, the first album went to pay back yeah. Sony for their investment, shall we say. Their risk, the risk, risk that they took with the three of us. Mm -hmm. So um, after that, uh, there would have been enough in the kitty. There was a fair bit in the kitty. So we decided, look, we will establish a charitable trust and we will put monies into the charitable trust, leave sufficient funds to keep the show on the road, so to speak, to pay your, your, your accountant, to pay your solicitor, to pay your uh, adv um, manager, and to, to pay all the people that keep, that, that you need in a sense to uh, turn up show, for the venue, the show keep, on the road. keep the, sh the show on the road, you, you know yourself and, and show business what it all involves. So we, we um, trying to put a figure on it, we recently dispersed some, some monies out of the charitable trust there, not about a year ago. But I suppose, in, on average, this is, on, this is online and on, on, the, on our kind of charitable website, I suppose we've donated just over a quarter of a million, I suppose, in monies to charities, different Excellent. charities Excellent. of, you know, church-based charities and uh, charities like Sight Savers, Education Projects, um, Chest, Heart and Stroke. It's not all one denominational kind of a charitable outreach. It's, a, it's to benefit humanity in the broadest spectrum. And at the same time, remember those who, have, who are in our, in our own walk of life would benefit from some charitable help, some, some money to keep the, them going as a charity. It must give you great satisfaction to be able to do that. It was, Jerry, to be honest. Uh, you never think that, you're, we're, as clergy, you're always encouraging people, you know, remember this charity, remember that charity, you're encouraging people to give generously. and. Uh, you know, and there's so many needy uh, causes, um, and it was fantastic for us to actually be in a position to to be donors uh, ourselves. And we each uh, of us had a, a particular uh, project that was dear to us. For me, uh, it was uh, some friends of mine had a, char a charity operating in Thailand, which was providing education for about 200 young children, um, and so we were able to fund their school uniforms and fund their uh, their food. Uh, and their legal papers that they needed in order to be registered in order to get into the educational system. Uh, so that was one of the projects that we did then uh, through a, a friend or a connection that Martin had, uh, Charlene, uh, Charlene's project. In Uganda, so it was a school that we, we contributed to, to, to build a school in Uganda. So that's the type of thing you will continue to do is? Yeah, well those are the big ones in the, in the beginning, Jerry. when there was a lot of money coming in at the start, uh, we had a lot of money to spend and we put it towards those big projects. And there was another school that, in Uganda I think it was, that we built. Uganda uh, and uh, Cambodia. 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 We were contacted by a, by a Mercy sister who was at school with our mother and she pr 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 kind of prompted us to maybe donate in my, our mother's name to this school okay. in Cambodia. Because, and the money's, of course, in other parts of the world Pound sterling goes a lot, goes a lot way, further yes, yes. there than it would here. Yes. So, it, it, you know, here you would put on an extension to a school, but with the money's given to Cambodia, Uganda, said you could build a, a school. Whole school. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, we'd love to go sometime out to see it. We just haven't got you there. Should, just you yet. should. We'd love to. There was a chance, of course, that after that first album, it was going to be a, a flesh in the pan. There was a novelty of three yeah, priests yeah, singing. Yeah, yeah. It could all have just crumbled after that. Yeah. But it didn't. It's just, and still it's going. Yeah. Yeah, we're in for the long, the long it's run. Right here, here for the long run. We had, I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable, really. And you, you, I mean, it was fantastic. We were on, uh, on a, uh, we were promoting the album on a, 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 I think it was a TV, a morning this morning, or a TV show in in, in England uh, somewhere. And then they brought out this Guinness Book of Records uh, thing and presented it with us live. We didn't know anything yeah. about that. That was a complete surprise. Um, you know, there's some of those sort of really exciting things that kind of happened. But we had, um, we were nominated three times for Classical Album of the Year, yes. uh, which brought us over to the Royal Albert Hall, do you know, and each one of those albums uh, has its own merit, you know. Uh, so you're quite right, it wasn't just a kind of a, a, one, a, a, one, yeah. a one album wonder. And it's had it, had it been, would, it, would you have been annoyed, had it been just the one 
I, I don't think I, I don't think so. I think we'd have been just thrilled that uh, we'd had you the had success one. that yeah. we had, yes. and we never really expe ex expected it to to grow uh, and develop in in the way that it subsequently did. So that just took us completely by surprise. And I was watching a, a YouTube video the other night of three of you in Germany. Oh yeah, yeah. And who was speaking oh, fluent Deutsch. German? Oh, yeah. <laughs> give, us a line, give us a line or two, say hello to the people. Good evening, my friend. How are you? We are welcome to you very much to this Aufenthalt together. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> where, did you, where, did you learn, where did you learn your German? So I did German in school as a schoolboy. I did it to A level and then I started out at Queen's and taken it as one of my subsid. Uh, courses and then I found it too difficult and I dropped it <laughs> and uh, then I was I ended up teaching I was teaching in uh, East Belfast at a grammar school there and uh, they were looking for a teacher to uh, teach beginners German uh, and they asked would I be willing to retrain as a language teacher so I went off with the, the Goethe Institute is run there's a big institute in Germany to teach uh, <laughs> German language teachers and so I went for several summer courses uh, to brush up my German language skills. Did you ever live in Germany? I, for a very short time, I worked, I worked in a factory in Germany uh, in a, uh, when, when I was 17 and a half and a half. <laughs> uh, so it was before I'd, I'd done my A-levels, uh, that was right down in the, the um, Friedrichshafen in the south of Germany. Uh, and then after I was ordained and took up this uh, retraining, I went to uh, Bavaria, a beautiful, beautiful little country town called Waging am See, uh, to, to work in the parish. So I worked in the parish there, doing the masses, giving the homilies and everything um, for the, the, that, that month. And we made wonderful friends there, so much so that um, the three of us had, uh, were, had founded a choir back in 1995, Capella Ciciliana, yes. uh, and uh, we brought the choir out to Waging am See, and we did mm. a Bavarian tour, oh, yes. singing in Munich and in Waging oh, and yeah. in Salzburg and, uh, and places like that. So we've still got great friends from there to this day. Talking of parishes, where are you now? I'm now in full time in our diocesan office at Somerton Road. So you are the I'm chancellor? The chancellor and uh, Delegated now in this period of we we're waiting for a new bishop as a, a delegated as the vicar general. One of the vicar, the other vicar generals is the hill over here on the other side of the town, uh, Canon John Murray. I heard a rumour. <laughs> Rumours are dangerous <laughs> kind of things. <laughs> heard a rumour from very good authority. <laughs> Have you heard the rumour yourself? <laughs> If not, let's start one. <laughs> <laughs> you could be looking at the next bishop here. Oh, no, no, you no. Could be no. Mm. What do you reckon, like boys? What do you reckon? Well, you know, he has all the... Attributes? All the attributes. All the attributes, uh, Jerry. Well, we'll sit, back, sit, back, sit back, sit back. He's an, expert, he's an expert in canon law with many, many years' experience working in that field. He's worked in parishes over the years. He's worked in the, at the heart of the diocesan office, working alongside the bishop, and has many years of experience of, uh, you know, operating uh, at a high level in the diocese. Uh, he's, um, he's, he's virtually a bishop he's a already. <laughs> uh, Thanks ever so much. He, he knows all the priests, he knows, <laughs> and he knows where all the bodies are buried. So. <laughs> and that's probably where it will stay. <laughs> If you were, you'd have to leave. You'd have to leave the boys, wouldn't you? Well, not to bring you couldn't have a priests. bishop and two priests singing together. <laughs> two mere priests and a bishop. You'd have to make them on seniors or something. Oh, yeah. You'd <laughs> have, to, have to get a title at least. And see if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, would you do that now? Oh, yeah. Arden, where are you now? Where are you? I'm in Newton Arts in Cumber. So I'm there about, I'm there about 13 and a half years. Oh, now. that long? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Vicar General's place. <laughs> 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 Time to move. Yeah, yeah. 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 And David, you are? I'm up on the north side of Belfast Loch, so as the, you head out in the boat towards Scotland, that sort of whole stretch out to Carrick Fergus. Lovely. So incorporating Green Castle, White House, White Abbey, Green Island, that's all my, my area. There was a pastoral letter come out at the weekend, mm -hmm. and of course, one of the Bishop McEwen sent it out highlighting many challenges facing the Catholic Church now. And one of those challenges is, is the lack of priests. Yes. 
there's virtually nobody in the seminaries mm -hmm. training to be priests. Mm -hmm. That is yeah. a that is a crisis. Big, big. Well, it's it's over over the years. It's evolved. Um, certainly, for, David mentioned when he started in in the seminary, there were twenty six rooms fully occupied. Yes. Now we don't have a seminary in in the nor in Belfast any longer, and there's only I think thirty two students from the whole island of Ireland in Maynooth. And some of those are out working in parishes, but they're counted as being in Maynooth, even though they're presently doing kind of a pastoral year. So our, our numbers have, have certainly declined. Um, but I think, you know, in a sense, <clears throat> this is a part of the Holy Spirit's plan. Um, we, we've evolved in this part of the world. It's, a, it's a, a different experience for us now in modern Western Europe. And we're not alone. I mean, there are di other dioceses across the whole country, yes. across the whole island of Ireland, across the, all of Western Europe, who are going through this change, this, this time of change. And, are you, uh, sorry, are you okay? Yes, sorry. Yes, so we're, we're, we're no different in a sense. And um, now people often say, you, know, you, wouldn't be, you wouldn't be asking the, the uh, lay men and women to be taking on greater roles if there was still enough priests. Yes. I think, I think we would actually. But isn't this now the opportunity to reopen the whole debate about, about priests marrying? About well, about well, that'll women. Probably, about that'll women. probably happen at the synod coming up in October. It may reach that le level of debate, and you know, where it'll go, of course, is another question. But it, we've opened up the synodal process across the, the whole church, uh, the Catholic Church, and, and in a sense, other denominations have you know, have already been exercising yeah. synodal kind yeah. of uh, gatherings. Um, uh, and so this will be this will be a, a hugely significant development, I think, in the life of the church. It's the beginning of a hugely significant development. What about women priests? Well, you know, I was thinking you would ask me that question. Funnily, <laughs> down the road, what would I say to Jerry Kelly if he asked me that question? We have a huge tradition, of course, that identifies priesthood with the male, and that's because Jesus became a man. But interestingly. Um, you know, I, I've talked with various people, our own co colleagues, brothers, many lay women uh, uh, who feel that calling to uh, rule within the life of the church. It's not there for them at the moment. Pope Francis, I think, is trying to open up uh, areas uh, of life and ministry in the, in the church where women will play, look, women play, off, you women play. Off a huge role in the life of the church, of the backbone of the church, in our parishes, etc. Without you, we wouldn't, it wouldn't function. Um, we, we've witnessed that through our own mothers and our sisters, etc. I'm sure you've witnessed it too, the backbone of the church. Um, Pope Francis, I think, is shaking, shaking the tree big time, and he's opening up areas for uh, lay men and women to take on roles that have traditionally been the preserve of a priest, or indeed a bishop. I think that's the beginning. He's facing a, quite a lot of opposition uh, and yet there's a, there's a huge swell, back swell of, of enthusiasm for what he's doing. So I think we've got to give the Holy Spirit time, as we call it in, in, our, in our thinking, time. It might be longer than we would like, but I think we have got to allow the Spirit to, to move. But on a personal basis church. you would have no object, am I, I think am I putting the words word in your became, mouth? The word became flesh didn't say became man, man or woman, no, yeah. he became flesh, mm -hmm. he, became, he took on humanity, and humanity is male and female. So I see there's, there's pl plenty of space in the life of the church to, to, to discuss this and look at it again. David and Martin, you would agree? Absolutely, 100%. People that I talk to, I mean, I think maybe 10 years ago, if you'd asked the congregation, you know, if you'd asked your parishioners, uh, what they thought about the idea of women priests. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. They would be kind of uh, resistant to that. They're used to the male priests. They wouldn't want women priests. Now, if you ask the same question, uh, they're almost outraged that it hasn't happened yet. Uh, so the, the, mood, the mood has largely changed, I think, in the church. Uh, and there would be a, a very broad-based uh, acceptance of that were, were that to happen. And I think Eugene's correct in saying that when the Pope is thinking about these things, he has to think about it globally. He can't just think about it in the context of Europe uh, and where Europeans are. Uh, it, he has to think about it, but what do Africans say? What do you know, other parts of the world say? And I think he, he wants to 
he's definitely opening the door to that and he's sending out all the signals. He's appointed women to very, very high positions that uh, in the Vatican congregations are what they call dicasteries. Uh, now that would previously have been all male bodies. Now there's, there are women who are running some of these, these as well. So I think he's sending out all the signals that there is a, there is a change coming and the synod is going to, I mean, people had uh, opportunity to, to voice their, their opinions and send that through to the Vatican. And certainly when Ireland, the island of Ireland t returned, it's, um, it's the, re the, the results of its uh, inquiry among the people of God, this was one of the issues that people wanted to go back to the Vatican, that we want this to be discussed. This is not the forum, obviously, for, no. <laughs> for in-depth uh, Catholic analysis. Let's finish it off, and what about another we saw? <laughs> well, well, we thought like you might see, ask us. Uh, I've come with a file, a filing. You know, this is just part and parcel of my of my work. But I, I don't I don't always keep papers in files. Sometimes I keep props in files. Well, People around the office think he's very busy. He's got, he's got <laughs> that big file he's got under his arm today. But actually, it's, um, it's, uh, this is the, where I keep my props, you see. <laughs> That's your hat. That's your my hat. Thank you very much. That's lovely. Lovely. That's and you've got, you've got glasses as well? No, we don't think we'll be using the glasses. That's, that's for, for, that's for, for the other car. That's for the car afterwards, sorry. And so that was nicely disguised, wasn't it? Beautifully disguised. He's a very busy man. He, he could be the next bishop. <laughs> there, there are thoughts like this is uh, this is oh, this is a bit of a party piece now. This is um, one that people often ask for when we're singing, and we often insist on performing whether you ask for it or not. What is it? It's, 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 a, it's a French song. Uh, it's a, it's a Percy French song. Uh. It, is, it is Phil de Flutter's ball. Can't you tell? can you tell his father was a bookie? Look at the hat. Look. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can. can and, you? and you know, this is my father's hat. You want any tips, right. <laughs> This this is my father's hat actually. It's one I use, and he was a pretty man, a pretty Plot. good oh, inspector. Oh, for good. We can tell you the difference between Iron Victory and Curse Pink. That's right. Uh, you know, without even, without, just without even seeing By taste, by, by taste, taste as well. Oh, no, just by sight. Just by sight. Oh, just by sight, yes. Our the Victory. man. Yes. Uh, yes, who Stein worked man. for the Ministry of Agriculture. Yes, sir. Yeah. And he looked after the potatoes. He that's did. Right. He, God, yeah. that's fascinating. That's what our mother used to say. Whatever you do, boys, don't become a pretty man when you grow up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we came another. We became priests. So anyway, <laughs> this is. I have to tune this now. Isn't this what okay. James Gall always always, always does? This. Talk up. amongst yourselves. Oh, you have to stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Not yourself. <laughs> now, uh, we, will we move this table ever right, so okay. slightly? Okay. She's going to dance and all. You <laughs> is there choreography in this? <laughs> I, after hours, after five o'clock, we prefer to So there's choreography and everything in oh, this? Of course, yes, yes, yes. Shall yes. I move aside? I move, yeah, because I'll move aside. aside. Yes. yes. Because yeah. if, we, if we never made a record, we probably would have gone with Michael Flatley around doing a river dance. <laughs> <laughs> so we had tough choices to make. But anyway, this is uh, Phil the Flutter's Ball. You're very welcome to join in in the refrain. It's very simple. My two beautiful assistants will guide you and lead you in there. And, um, but you know, uh, you, you, you know it anyway very well, but we'll do it, we'll do it with a wee priestly twist. <clears throat> Are you going to have a collection? That comes after the second verse. Don't be worried with, with that choreographed it as well. That's, that's all I, don't worry. That's the loop. Have you heard the fin the flute from the town of Ballymuck? The times were going hard with him, in fact the man was bruck, so he just sent out a notice to his neighbours one and all, as how he'd like the company that evening at a ball. And when right to last, he was careful to suggest to them that if they found a hat of his convenient to the door, the more they put in, whenever he requested it, the better would the music be for master in the floor. With the flute on the flute and a twiddle on the fiddle, often in the middle like a head and on the green. Oh! Hands and arms crossed to the wall. Oh, how to be the gaiety of things that was born. Did it, 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 there was Mr. Dennis Dufferty who kept a running dog. There was little crooked Paddy from the tear of Lockett Bog. There were boys from every barony and girls from every art. And the beautiful Miss Brady's in their private ass and dance. Along with them came Bungs and Mrs. Cafferty. Little Mickey Balligan was also to the fore. Rose, Suzanne, and Margaret Dorafferty. The flower of Art Galleon and the pride of Petra With a truth on the flute and a twig on the fiddle, look. In the middle like a heaven on the green. Oh! 
And the one crossing to the wall Oh, how to be in the gaiety It fills the filters ball Dee 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 then little Mickey Mulligan got up to show them how And then the widow Cafferty steps out and makes her bow I could dance you off your legs, you see, as sure as you were born If you'll only make the piper play, the hair is in the corn And Phil played up to the best of his ability The lady and the gentleman begin to do the share Faith, the Mick, to you that's got agility Be gone, oh, Mrs Cafferty, you're laping like a hare With the tooth on the first and the tooth on the third and the third and the third and the third like a hare on the third and 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 the Oh, hell, be in the gaiety of the third then Phil the Pooh tipped the wing to little Crooked Pat. I think it's nearly time to see for passing round the hat. So Paddy passed the cobbin round and Knuckle Mighty Cute says, You've got to pay the piper when he tutors all his roots. Then all joined in with the greatest joviality, covering the buckle and the shuffle and the cut. Cheeks were danced of the very finest quality with the wind that bent the company for dangle in the first wind. With the twist on the flute and the twinkle on the fiddle door. Hopping in the middle like a hammer on the twinkle door. Hopping down, hands around, crossing through the wall. Oh, how to be in the gaiety at the foot of the ball. With the twist on the twinkle on the fiddle door. Hopping in the middle like a hammer on the twinkle door. Hopping down, hands around, crossing through the wall. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please keep your hands together when you thank the three guys for coming down tonight. Father Eugene, Father David, Father Martin. Thank you, 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 Thank you,